travelling and had one amazing experience that changed a pretty good holiday into a wow? Or how about a terrible experience that ruined your whole holiday or completely changed your impressions of a destination or attraction? We can't just assume that the guest experience begins and ends with one visit or one service encounter, or that it's only about what happens at our attraction or site, because it's not. The guest experience is complex. It's a journey, one that is made up of many elements or touch points. Like any journey, it needs to be carefully mapped out to ensure that all the different parts come together to create a seamless and rewarding experience. In tourism, the whole is definitely the sum of its parts. We can break the guest journey into different phases. The first phase is the anticipation stage, where you build guest desire, where you create a sense of excitement and expectation, where you convince potential guests that your site or destination is really worth visiting. Once they've decided to visit, there's a transit phase. This is your opportunity to use things like signage and online communication to reassure visitors that they've made the right decision. Then there's the on-site experiences, all the activities and interactions that occur at your site. This is followed by another transit phase. Then there's a reflection phase when guests think about and discuss what they've experienced. This is where memorabilia, photographs and social media play an important role. In each of the phases, there are many touch points where we can influence our guest's journey. Each touch point can have a positive or negative effect on the guest evaluation of their journey. Let's take a family day trip as an example. Prior to travel, the family searches for and finds a tourist attraction that will appeal to everyone. This is a real positive. On the way, they get lost and the kids start fighting. This is not pleasant for anyone. The family arrives in a bad mood. At the entrance, there's a huge sign with the kids' favourite animals on it. The staff are really friendly. Everyone cheers up. There's lots to do and it's fun. Later on, the youngest falls off the play equipment and grazes her knee. This creates a huge drama. But luckily, there's a great cafe where an ice cream magically makes everything better. There are some good shows during the day that appeal to all. But the kids feel a bit ill from too much sun and excitement and ice cream. So that's a minor negative. But in the car on the way home, everyone agrees that it's been a great day. Even better, the kids fall asleep, which makes for a much more peaceful trip home. And the souvenir toy from the gift shop and all the photos become permanent reminders that it really was a great day out. From this example, you can see there are lots of touch points. Each of these are opportunities to create amazing experiences. Breaking the customer journey up into the different phases and examining the touch points in each allows managers to identify places where perhaps a small tweak in design or service delivery can convert potential negatives into positives. We're going to focus on what happens on site to illustrate the value of thinking about experiences as touch points. We'll use Australia Zoo to illustrate our points. So here's Erina to tell us a little bit about the zoo's philosophy and approach to designing visitor experiences. The legacy of, of Steve Irwin lives on with all of us here at Australia Zoo and globally through our charity projects with the Australia Zoo Wildlife Warriors. So everything we do is in honour of Steve um, and we still want to connect everyone that comes to Australia Zoo with his legacy and what he believed in with connecting with animals and then wanting to save them. I think it's so special for families to come to Australia Zoo because there is so much to see and do. There's enough for all ages here. So we have lots of different animals that they can meet from small age groups right up to however old. Um, there's, there's fun things, there's interactive rides. We've got playgrounds where it's themed with animals so they can learn about those animals as well. Information throughout the zoo so the parents are learning at the same time their kids are. Enclosures are easily accessible so that people can um, see the animals, touch the animals, feed them in some cases as well um, and really get up close and, and make sure that they learn about what we're trying to do here and about the conservation projects that they're linked with back in their home country. It's so special to come to Australia Zoo, one, because people feel like they're connecting with Steve Irwin. Everybody loves Steve Irwin and love his family, so they're, always, they're still seeing that Terry and the kids and all of us at Australia Zoo are continuing that legacy. Everyone walks away from here going, I had no idea how big and how beautiful the place is. It's always clean, it's so green, it's like a, a botanical gardens with these amazing beautiful animals that they get to learn about. We also get told that um, in other places and other zoos they've been to, they can't 
can't get as close to animals um, or see them as well or even be able to touch them or interact with them like they can here at Australia Zoo. Um, and that's what we believe in. So I'm, I'm quite thankful that that puts us uh, apart from all the rest. The first on-site touch point for visitors is usually the car park and ticketing area. These areas can be crowded and confusing, so clear communication is critical. Signs, barriers, landscaping and staff can all be used to tell visitors where to stand and where to go and what to do. At Australia Zoo, the first things visitors see as they approach the entrance are signs with photos of animals and conservation messages. This sets the scene about what visitors are likely to encounter and signals that the zoo values wildlife conservation. Signs clearly indicate where visitors need to go. Staff are available to answer questions prior to the gates opening. Visitors often arrive early, so seating, shelter and refreshments help make the wait more bearable. Once through the gate, it's common to have a staging area, a place where visitors can gather, work out what the site offers and decide what to do first. This touch point is where you need to get visitors excited about their visit, but also provide information to assist with decision making. At Australia Zoo, several staff walk around this area providing directions and advice. Many are holding Australian native animals for visitors to photograph and touch, which supports the zoo's conservation theme and adds to the excitement. This touch point also includes a photo area where visitors can capture the start of their special day. Photos are an important part of the visit because they help visitors reflect on and share their experiences. The staging area often also includes directional signs that help visitors navigate around the site. These are important as there's nothing worse than getting lost or wasting time trying to find your way around. Directional signs can be large orientation signs with a you are here symbol or simple signposts. Directions can also be conveyed through symbols carved into footpaths or mobile apps. Once guests step out of the staging area into the site, there are many other touch points. These include exhibition areas, service areas and spaces where visitors move through or interact with their surroundings or with each other. The design of these needs to match or support your activities and theme. If you want to create spaces for quiet or solitary activities, use low lighting, soft music, high ceilings and soft luxurious furnishings. Plants, fountains and soft floral scents all add to the ambiance and signal that this is a place for relaxation and quiet contemplation. If, on the other hand, you want to encourage active participation, it's better to use bright colours, loud, upbeat music and moving design elements. These draw people into the space and are particularly appealing to younger markets. If your site attracts families, children's playgrounds are natural touch points. Try to provide seating and shade and make sure spaces are large enough to allow interaction between hosts, friends and family members. Other touch points include places where visitors stop to look at things, to chat, to make decisions or to rest. Directional signs here will ensure your visitors don't waste time trying to work out where to go next. At these touch points we can enhance the visitor experience with signs, talks and activities that explain what is great about your site. This is usually referred to as interpretation. The key purpose of interpretation is to inform, engage and illustrate. Good interpretation builds on visitors' previous knowledge and experiences. It doesn't overwhelm visitors with facts, but rather uses examples, stories and illustrations to help visitors appreciate why your site is important. Interpretation can also take the form of talks and activities. If you really want to attract and engage visitors, design experiences that involve some sort of interaction with the environment, with objects, with animals, with people. Multisensory activities that provide opportunities to touch, feel, smell, taste or simply do something active are particularly effective. If these can be designed to elicit particular emotions, surprise, wonder, excitement, empathy, even better because it is emotions like these that turn good experiences into great memories. The last touch point visitors usually encounter is the gift shop and exit. This is the last chance to make a positive and memorable impact on site. Positive experiences at this touch point include souvenirs and memorabilia that support the site's theme, special offers to entice visitors to return, gifts, opportunities to sign up as members, and a warm and sincere farewell from staff. 
all help to reinforce the positives and balance out any negatives that may have occurred during the day or during the stay. So it's not just about one experience or activity or service, it's about every element coming together as a united whole. From the marketing to the transit, the on-site experience and the follow-up, all are important in creating a memorable experience that visitors will talk about long after their visit is over.